Let's now define what it means for resistors to be connected in parallel and derive a formula to compute the equivalent resistance of resistors connected in parallel. So we'll take four resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4, and we will connect them in parallel across a given voltage, delta V. Maybe that comes from a battery or something, but we're not worried where delta V comes from. What we're worried about is taking our resistors and connecting them all in the same way across this voltage. And to do that, we'll take the wire up top here that has electric potential V plus and connect all the top terminals of the resistors to that wire, and then the wire here that has electric potential V minus, and we'll connect all the bottom terminals of the resistors to that wire. In other words, now we have four resistors that are identically connected across the voltage, and in fact, all see the same voltage, and that's the definition of being in parallel. These resistors are in parallel because they all see the same voltage. V1 is V2, is V3, is V4, is delta V. And what the current is going to do here is split into I1, I2, I3, and I4 in such a way that R1 times I1 is equal to delta V, R2 times I2 is equal to delta V, and so on and so forth for R3 and R4. So we have our resistors connected in parallel. The question is, can I take this network of resistors and simplify it to one single equivalent resistor across the same voltage delta V? Because that would make things a lot easier. There's a way to essentially say that all four resistors here behave as one single equivalent resistor, and I can find the equivalent resistance, then it'll be a lot easier to deal with. So how will we do that? Well, let's write what's true about the current. We know for sure that I has to be the sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. I mean, that is where I1, I2, I3, I4 come from. They come from I. Now, if I substitute Ohm's law in here, what do I get? Well, I here is going to be split into these four currents, and each current goes through a resistor. So for each current, I can write that V1 divided by R1 is I1, and then V2 divided by R2 is I2, and so on and so forth. V3 over R3 plus V4 over R4. All right, well, we know, though, that V1, V2, V3, and V4, they're all the same. They're all equal to delta V. So what do we have? We have delta V divided by R1 plus delta V divided by R2, and so on and so forth. And the goal here is to figure out the equivalent resistance. In other words, what would the value of R equivalent have to be so that this single resistor here behaves the same as the four resistors above while being connected across the same voltage? So in other words, whatever current I would have here, which would be I, would have to be such that I also satisfies Ohm's law and is equal to delta V over R equivalent. So we get here on the left-hand side, delta V divided by R equivalent. Let's make this maybe a little bit clearer where we're going to make some room here and move this down. There we go. All right, and so we can simplify delta V everywhere, and we find that 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. And of course, you could do this for just two resistors or any number. You can generalize this for 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. It would still be the same formula, just with additional terms. 
The catch is that you're computing 1 over r equivalent. So, be careful, you are going to find 1 over r equivalent equals something. You still have to flip the fraction to get r equivalent. So that is our formula, though, to find the equivalent resistance for resistors connected in parallel. It's worth noting, by the way, that mathematically, you're going to get r equivalent smaller than any of the four values of resistance. So smaller than R1, R2, R3, or R4. That's just what you get. So you get overall an equivalent resistance that is smaller than any of the four values considered individually. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.